Let's start. Yeah, please. The other time we started with uh, the abnormal labor to precise the postpartum hemorrhage because we are done with the normal labor. Unless somebody has a special question. Other than that, I said the other time I said that uh, there are some few, just some few areas of postpartum hemorrhage that probably might be added to the end of semester question. So there's a need for us to go through that. And I think we started it well. Please let's hear somebody make a summary of the postpartum hemorrhage that we started. Please let him hear you. Now I have your names. I know your names. I may not even know you by faces, but I know your name. So when I mention your name to contribute, please don't dodge. Don't leave the page. Because you see that the person will dodge. It's not good. Let's share, let's Jojo and come out with what we have learned previously. So let's hear somebody talk about um, the postpartum hemorrhage, the definition. <coughs> Please let's define the <laughs> page. Let's define postpartum hemorrhage. Hello, Haja. Hello, Haja. Hello. Definition of PPA. Please, anybody. Haja, please be said. Hello. Hello, Haja. Please talk, we can hear you. I think she's not hearing me. Aja, please, you have muted yourself. Now I need to be doing a dim. Also, Somebody should define the bottom language. Hello, please can you hear me? Yes, Hajia, we can hear you. Yes, that we can. Hajia, please, you said postpartum hemorrhage is any bleeding up to 500 mils after bed or no matter how small bleeding that causes a deterioration of the mother's condition after delivery. Today, the next who just gave the definition of the PPH? What 
introduce your name, please. What is the name of the one who just gave the contribution? Who defined the people? Oh, good. Can you hear me? Am yes, I hear you? Yes, okay. yes, you please. can hear me then. So we make, we defined, we have created a postpartum hemorrhage in a summary for the sake of those of you who left the page and that they can't wait to, to, to listen to PPH. Okay. So postpartum hemorrhage, we defined it as any bleeding from the genital tract after the delivery of the baby amounting to 500 mils or more or any lesser amount that can have sex on the health of the mother. We we'll term it as PPH. We mentioned the type of PPH. We say we have primary and we have secondary. And under the primary, we have it. We have the major causes of postpartum hemorrhage under primary PPH. And then we mentioned that the primary PPH is where the bleeding starts within 24 hours after delivery. And the secondary PPH is after 24 hours. In the major causes we mentioned, a tony of the uterus as one of the major causes of primary postpartum hemorrhage. Then we also mentioned traumatic PPH, that is PPH due to, to trauma. Then we also mentioned fibrinogenemia, which some books will call it DIC, dissemination. Coagulation. And then we disposed courses of ones. And so we mentioned that with the entry of the uterus, anything that will cause enlargement of the uterus during pregnancy excessively is likely to bring about a pony of the uterus where the uterus will refuse to contract. So we mentioned multiple pregnancy. We also mentioned big baby. We mentioned polyhydraminos. We also mentioned we think put up a conception that will prevent the uterus from contracting. And then we came to another major cause of primary PPH. We mentioned that traumatic PPH and we said trauma varying from bleeding episiotomy, vaginal wall laceration, cervical tear, uterine rupture. They are the causes, the predisposing causes of a major cause of primary PPH and a trauma, traumatic PPH, we mentioned them. And then we mentioned a PPH, another major cause of primary PPH, which is the DIC or hypofibrinogenemia. And we mentioned the various causes of DIC. I mean, the variable fibrinogenemia. We mentioned them all. And then we uh, tried to differentiate between bleeding from uh, or PPH as a result of a tonne and PPH as a result of trauma. We gave out the difference that if PPH due to a ton of the uterus, it means that the bleeding comes in gushes, it comes in clots, it is dark red. Why? Because the uterus will take its time to fill itself before it pushes the 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 its contents before it pushes out the clotted blood out. And so that is one major thing. And the uterus, we say, will feel flabby, it will feel boggy, and it refuses to contract. That is a, a typical love. PPH due to a tony of the uterus. And then when we took the, the traumatic PPH, we said in traumatic PPH, the blood comes out in a spoon form, in a continuous flow form. Unlike the A-tony, where you just take time to fill itself and then it comes 
comes out in a very gushy way in clothes, it was refusing to contract. It in traumatic people, it was to be contracting. Especially if it is not ruptured uterus. But if it is any last reason, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Through the vagina wall, laceration, cervical tear, cretonia tear, um, in a school form. And that type of people, the blood is bright red. You can see that it is coming from a sexist record or that is on. And that is where the blood is coming from. And I told you that, especially if it's a cervical tear, then you see, I see the woman is urinating blood. A cancer is bloody. But she's not urinating. It's the blood that is coming from an artery. Then I uh, mm -hmm. also mentioned. Mm -hmm. Where is it? Mama. So then let me put you in the waiting room. If you can't control your children, I will control them for you. I will control you people and put you in the waiting room so that you can go there and make the noise. We are talking about people that can kill a woman that you have just lost. And if, if you are not interested, don't distract Now, I'm saying that if the blood, that the bleeding is as a result of hypofibrinemia, I'm only making a recommend last week. If the blood is from, as a result of TIC or hypofibrinemia, I think I gave you the post, the causes of. I gave you the, the causes of the TIC or the hypofibrinogenemia. You mentioned hepatitis or infective jaundice, infective hepatitis, where the fact that when a pregnant woman comes to labor, or you see any pregnant woman with jaundice, it should be of concern to you as a midwife, whether she's coming to your facility or she's, you met her in a transport yard, you met her in the same vehicle, be of concern okay. and advise her okay. that she should go and deliver at the hospital. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, she will end up with severe bleeding, uncontrollable type of bleeding, which is also difficult to manage. Tell her to go and deliver at the hospital. We also said that another major cause of PTSD due to hypofibrinogenemia is a, dead, a retention of a dead fetus in utero. And I highlighted so much on the to listen to fetal heartbeat for one full minute. Just one minute, they can't. They would like to listen to the FH for what a minute and multiply it. And what is the, it's a lazy way of practicing midwifery. And I said, because of that, if you do that, it's like the fetus, the FH that you had was the last fetal heartbeat that was the meaning that the patient, the baby was passing on. And so that was the last FH that you had. And you said the FH is there. Because you didn't take the time to listen to it for one minute, the baby dies without you knowing the mother, without the mother also knowing. And at the end of the day, we said the dead fetus was. Once you take neutral matter, is working. The, the dead fetus body was that Gloria. You have put it off. I was going to put you in the waiting room and you see. You try again. Try that noise again. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You go ahead. I'll put you in the waiting room. So, uh, with the dead fetus. We turn in neutral, it will, the, the fetus will release an, an enzyme called thrombokinase or thromboplasm. And these enzymes will 
you know, invite it to attract other protein factors into play. And then once they are in the bloodstream, remember there's nothing for them to do. There's no rest. And so the protein factors will remain there useless. So that the day will come when the woman will come and deliver this dead fetus. And where that that's where the placenta will get separated. When the separate the placenta it will start bleeding. The, the woman's body will need the protein factors to help her raise the bleeding. But because it had already been in the simple, it wouldn't be able to get to help with the protein factors. The patient will start bleeding. And we said that this type of blood loss, so what happens is that it does not change. That uh, even when you make an attempt as a midwife to arrest this kind of PPH by giving any embol, the site will start a bleeding from, and then all orifices, patient will be bleeding from the other orifices. Sometimes you may be bleeding rectally, vaginally, and and of course, the site that you have given the injection, then it tells you it's typical of endogenemia. And then we came to the management. That was where we ended. I started the management and time was up for me. Then we left. Any questions so, so far before we move on to the... If you're a midwife, you one day, one day. No matter what. It's how careful you are. You may come face to face with, with postpartum hemorrhage and you should be able to address other than that. What we're just communicating with children, probably for Stanas. Hey. Stanas. Hey, hey, line. What's so you have been to know? It's checking money. On this road, on driving. They was so crammy checking all the time. So this is all the, all the sister Helena. I made a book with my I am not right. Join in. Join in. My main friend or the different phone a room. My main friend and be some uh -huh. a Oh, okay, no, uh, Samsung. Uh -huh. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hello, sister. Hello. Yeah, when it, it continues like that, you see, it's so frustrating. You what's him enjoying? It's true. Me, me, when I make an attempt, it's like I've been muted and I can't join. But now it's okay. It's okay since uh, announced. I think we have to address this thing uh, going forward. We have to address it because it's so frustrating. Mm? Yes, sister. Okay. I don't know where I even got to. Yeah, I was talking about the management of physiology. So the physiology of uh, postpartum hemorrhage, somebody should read that one and then we'll manage it. Anas, whoever put it there, please read through it and then let's quickly manage the distance. Hmm. You read what is on the screen. Uh, 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 what you have put there, the physiology of the 
They send the PPH. Pathophysiology. Yeah, the pathophysiology. Oh. Yeah. With the introduction, saying the physiology of uh, postpartum health, hemostasis depends primarily upon mechanical events mediated by hormones which induce strong different muscular contractions. Virtually all research studies focus on the latter rather than the former, but the phenomenon cannot be understood without examining why uterine contraction stops bleeding. Broadly speaking, myometrium and decidua are arranged such that powerful muscular contractions after delivery favor hemostasis. Fewer arteries fan out to create a low resistance vascular bed in the intervillous space. Please, can I continue? No, let me explain what you have for you. I don't know. Me, I'm not a newscaster. <laughs> I don't like Miss Castor type of <laughs> presentation. You read, you explain for people to understand. We are talking about hemostasis. That is the part of physiology of the hood. But I think the other day I went through the oh, it's not your group. I went through the the physiology of third stage of labor with you. We have treated this one. We have treated physiology of third stage of labor. They, this one has named it as part of physiology. It's the same. Thing. So yeah, physiology of testing, we have gone through it. I told you, and we went through it. Do you remember? Do you remember yeah. that I mentioned the part of physiology? I did that. that one. I can confidently say yes. And so maybe I didn't revise this one today. That one, I didn't go through the revision, but I'm trying to manage the test stage of, I mean, the PPH itself. The part of physiology, if you remember, we said when the, the placenta separates, the blood from the intervillous space of the placenta will shunt back to fill the maternal sinuses, the maternal blood vessels. And in an attempt to fill the maternal sinuses, that is where the living leakages, the oblique muscle fibers will come Three. into play. Constraints. Yes. The, the the intervillous, how do you call it? Blood from the intervillous space, I said, when it fills the maternal side where the placenta got separated, filling the maternal blood vessels, also known as the maternal sinuses, in an attempt to cork it so that the woman will not bleed. Then the, the oblique muscle fibers will form what you call a figure of eight pattern to arrest, to entangle the open maternal sinuses in an attempt to arrest bleeding. And then by so doing, we said, the entanglement becomes so severe to the extent that the open vessels will then rupture, releasing blood clot called the retroplacenta clots. And this retroplacenta clot will then form on the placenta surface to form on the plate the, the membranes and then the placenta will be delivered. If it comes out with the fetal surface first, we say the shields method of placenta separation. That's what we said the other time. And then if it should come with the maternal surface first, where it will, the placenta will turn outwards like a, a button, when we are pushing a button out of a hole, the way it is, that one, we call it the Matthew Duncan's method. Some people call it Dirty Duncan's because at that time, the ritual placenta clot will not be captured in the membranes. And so the delivery fold becomes messy. It will mess up with bleeding or with blood. And then finally, the next physiological change is that there will be a position of the uterine wall. First, there will be contraction. The uterine wall will contract to compress on the open blood vessels and bleeding will stop. Then the opposition of the uterine wall also take place where the two surfaces, the surfaces of the uterus will come together like you are clamping, you are clapping your hands. Each side will compress on each other. Like if you should bring your two palms together and compre compress it tightly, when you compress it tightly, 
then that is the opposition of the uterine wall in an attempt for the uterus itself to stop bleeding. So that is what we, we said. With regards to the physiology, where some of the books are calling pathophysiology of the control of bleeding. Now let's manage the postpartum hemorrhage. When the patient is bleeding, please, those of you in the delivery suit, how do you manage PPH? Please, this one, I want you to talk. I've been speaking, yeah. So, 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 I want you people to talk. Mm -hmm. How do you people manage postpartum hemorrhage? The first thing the midwife should do, please tell me before you start the management, tell me the first thing that you do when you realize that patient is bleeding. The first thing that the midwife does. Yes. Sandra Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Please, we are listening to you. Yes, please call for help. Somebody should. Uh huh. You can call for help. How do you call for help? Good. You call for help. How do you call for that help? Yes, I need a new one. Yes, I need a shout. You shout. That what? Shout. That what? Come and help. I deliver. Come and help. You shout. It's P P A. I need help. Somebody come and help. I deliver what? No. Aja, you call them. You, you said PPH. You, you call them. PPH. PPH. Please let's mute ourselves. Hey, who was he? please, you can unmute yourself. You are muted, please. You can unmute yourself. Myself. Okay, thank you. Okay. So please, shall we hear somebody managing PP? Those of you who have been in the delivery world for a long time, please, how do you manage this such situation? It's a deadly situation. If you don't address it well, patient may pass on. How do we manage PPH? I want people to tell me, please. First of all, you call for help. And then secure the food and IV lines. Ensure the IV lines are You call for help? Uh -huh. You secure two IV lines. They send you one. You do what? Speak then... louder. Uh -huh. You secure uh -huh. IV lines, two. Two mm -hmm. IV lines. Okay. Uh -huh. And then. Ask your help or the one that can be assistant to hydrate the woman with normal saline, mm -hmm. not less than 1.5 liters. And then, okay, as the woman is positioned, you start with the uterine uh, massage. Mm -hmm. And you can, don't worry, that's why I can't see. Um, that's not true. That will be the end of the day. Why I mean, to come to the end of the day. Then call Jackie. So, the end of the day, the end of the day, the end of 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 She's lucky. Yes, she's gone. She's gone now. 
She's, she's at the mm -hmm. way now. So continue, mm -hmm. please. You continue. So I was saying that. Go ahead, please. Uh, please. As your assistant said that uh, to, to set up inclusion, at least not less than 1.5 mm -hmm. meters. And then you continue with the uterine okay. massage. And then now you start with your session to see. If it is the uterus that is not contacting, you give us the same inclusion and some in bolus. And you can also add mm -hmm. a tannazamic acid, one gram to it. And then if it is not the uterus that is not contracting and still bleeding it, can you inspect the perineum? Is, the, is it coming from a tear? Is it a cover tear or cervical tear? So depending on the force you attack, is it a retained product? Mm -hmm. you, you expel the retained product. And then when you are done with all this and the bleeding has subsided, you take a, a blood sample to go and check for the age to level, hemoglobin level, mm -hmm. and also known the platelet level in the blood so that you attack them. Thank you, sister. That's how far from this. Sister, please, in addition Thank to Thank you very much. Is that Anastasia? Uh huh. Sister, please, in addition to what is said, we also know that full bladder mm -hmm. can cause a postpartum hemorrhage. So you have to uh, pass uterine catheter to empty the bladder too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good. Hello, sister. Hello. Yeah. Okay. So you pass catheter. Uh -huh. Yes. And please, you also put yes, the. Yes, I'm listening to you. Go ahead. You also put the baby to breast so that the natural oxytocin will be released from the posterior tissue gland. Yes, I agree with you. Put the baby to breast to, to start suckling once the baby starts oxytocin will be released to help with uterine contraction. Good. Okay. Yeah. So, Ebony Amisa, what do you do? You will yes. <laughs> Hello. Go sir. ahead. Yeah, I was coming yes. to talk about that. I'm putting the baby to breast. But my colleague has said it, that's why I lowered my hand. Adia. Adia, please, you also monitor the BP. <laughs> and we still have to continue oh. to massage the uterus. So it is well contracted. Oh, yeah. We at the lower level. If the bleeding starts and you empty the bladder, give the oxytocin drip. We also give uh, this thing, rectal and uh, cytotype. Cytotype, okay. Yes. How many milligrams? 200. For a uh, 600 micrograms. So okay. if you continue like that and you realize that uh, your condition is not improving, you will be there. Okay, just I will decide to say, uh, uh, one doctor educated us that in terms of CPE, you have to use 800 micrograms. You give 400 sublingua mm -hmm. and then you give uh, 400 rectal because sublingua will bypass the first uh, first pass so that it will work very fast for the woman to control mm -hmm. the baby. So you put 400 okay. sublingua, 400 rectal. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my, and the woman mm -hmm. pay for the size of thing. So you give them 600. Sometimes you give uh, you give the 600, then you give a uh, Incorporate oxytocin in uh, this thing. Uh, what is the normal thing? And set it up. Mm -hmm. Hello, okay. Roger. Yes, good. Thank you very much Roger. for that contribution. And please, yes. And please, uh, uh, with my place also, at times, when we give the site to take 800, uh, uh, 400 rectal, and then the uh, 
You said there is no what? Give me a said one gram also. Hello. Hello. I'm listening. Hello. And I said we also Go give another one gram in addition. If so, okay. So they should continue the the conversation in the in the in the waiting room there. Please go ahead. Uh -huh. Go ahead, please. Yes, Regina J. Regina J. Your contribution. Hello, Dubai Kinsu. Your contribution. Adia, please, if you hear an Indian Adia. Yes. Adia, yes. please, I'm adding up to, uh, with uh, what my sister Anna said. With a side to take, the reason why most uh, mm -hmm. midwives don't give the sibling well is that, like, when you give the sibling well, time, it affects the client, the BP and the body temperature. They run into rigor and you have to manage that one too. In addition, that is why mostly it's preferable to give the rectal than both sub, uh, the sublingual the, and the, 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 the BP does what? The BP, what, what does the BP do? It reduces. Yeah. And the client yeah. run into rigor, and you have to manage the rigor plus the PPH again. That's why sometimes mm -hmm. they prefer giving the rectal than the the anal than the this one, the sublingual. Okay. 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 That's true. Okay, I thank you so much for your contribution with respect to the management of PPH. When the patient is bleeding after delivery, like we said, the first thing the midwife does, the first thing that the midwife does is to ensure that the uterus is well contracted because we said that about 90% of the bleeding is coming from the placenta site. You can just there's a few number that might be coming from trauma. Patient is bleeding as a result of trauma. So we said try to massage the uterus to contract and retract. So I told you the other time that I have devised some acronym for managing postpartum hemorrhage. Especially when it is due to a tony of the uterus. First, find out that what you are seeing will determine the management. Please take note of that. What you are seeing or observing, the type of blood, the color of the blood will determine how you should manage the client. For example, as soon as the baby came out, patient is bleeding and it's coming in an extreme form in a continuous slow form. Quickly, it tells you that she's having PPH as a result of trauma. There's a tear somewhere. So quickly, you dab the dry, uh, the blood, dry it, and then view where the, blood, the bleeding is coming from. So that if it is a traumatic PPH, if there's a cut, it's a trauma, quickly you look for an artery for them, and then you clump where the bleeding is coming from. That is if it is due to trauma that about 90 to 95 or 98 percent of pph is due to a uh, bleeding coming from the placenta site then you manage pph uh, as though it's coming from the placenta site first because that one too the blood is coming in clots it comes in a gushy form with clots so it tells you it is a tony of the uterus, and that is how you manage it as such. Now, if it is due to a tony of the uterus, I've told you Georgia has devised a method called SET. The SET. Last week I mentioned this. Oh, I mentioned it when I was managing the PPH. This, you are not hearing it for the first time. So the SET is SET. Didn't I mention it last week? You mentioned it. You did. You mentioned it, yes. I mentioned sex. Yes, I did. 
where the eggs may stimulate the uterus to contract and retract. Then the ye is empty the uterus and the bladder of their contents. Then the tea is treated for shock. All those them to manage the BP. They never mention treatment of shock. You are treating for shock, except that she didn't. It's, if the weather is not very hot, then you provide warmth. You monitor the vital signs. You raise the foot end to ensure that blood drains to the vital organs, like the liver, the lungs, and then uh, the kidneys. Because most of the time, in many of the postpartum hemorrhage cases, it is the, the renal failure that normally kills them. When a patient ends up with VPH, she is likely to end up with uh, renal failure because the, the kidneys will not get enough blood to form which is what normally kills them. That's why in PPH, if you don't, oh, okay. So you expel the product of sterilization or preparing for you only. That's why you have to go to the waiting room there and sleep there. Go there and sleep. Nobody will bring you in. Okay, so that is it. That is the management. And then we are saying that in the process of stimulating the uterus to contract and retract, don't forget to give the oxytocin drug. In fact, it will depend, the giving of the oxytocin drug will depend on the protocol of that hospital. Some use oxytocin to give injection. Some use egometrine injection. Some use syntometrine. It all tantamounts to stopping the bleeding. That is one thing that we have to do. Then in the course of doing that, setting up this infusion, the ringers lactate, putting in the oxytocin, remember to take blood sample for hemoglobin estimation, and bleeding and clotting time tests. And also, you have to uh, uh, check blood sample for grouping and cross-matching so that you'll be able to give blood transfusion as prescribed by the doctor. Don't forget, at the peak of the bleeding, don't forget to call the doctor, the medical officer on duty. Call him or her to come and review the patient for you. Okay. Now you have covered the patient. Continue the monitoring. Continue the monitoring. If it is a tony of the uterus, that is how you have to go by it. Then at the nine minutes, if it is product of conception that uh, had brought about the A tonic PP, then you try to prepare the patient for ye you evacuation of the uterus. They curate the debris, those products that are remain neutral and is preventing the uterus from contracting. You try to do evacuation, evacuate it from the uterus, and it is enough to prevent the bleeding. Now, if it is trauma, as we said from the beginning, try to suture the cuts that is causing the bleeding. If it is, there's no cut, uterus is well contracted, all seems to be well, except that patient is bleeding. And then take note of the, the, the blood that you used the receiver to receive from the vulva there, from the vagina, you play the, the receiver in between. Between the patient tie. Quickly, you have to arrange mm -hmm. for fresh blood. Mm -hmm. Some people give plasma. There's a plasma. Why? Because mm -hmm. they think the plasma contains the blood 
the clotting factors that will help with the clotting of blood. However, because uh, of severe blood loss, she will need a whole blood. And so quickly arrange for blood transfusion to save the situation, especially if it is due to hypofibrinogen amia. Okay. So education. How do you help educate the client? You have done all that it takes for you to address the bleeding. The bleeding has stopped. Your infusion is in situ. You have fixed the baby to the breast. What is the next action that the midwife should take? Yes, anybody? Okay. Okay. Please, any questions so far? And I don't please forget my that when you are managing PPA, your hand is up. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Please, the please. Hypo, uh, please and the hypofragenomia, uh, is it the same Fragenomia. as the thrombopathy? Uh -huh. Yes. Is it the same as the thrombopathy? Thrombo? Party. Thrombo yes, party. it's the same thing. Yes, okay. it's the same okay. thing. Okay. Yes, it's the same thing and it's the same as the DIC. It's okay. the same thing. That's why people talk about management of it. They say they talk about 40s, the 40s, the thrombus, the, thrombos, the tissue, uh, thromboplastin, and then tissue. So then uh, I would prefer to go under each course, under each course how you have to manage it. And in fact, if you're a midwife and you don't know much about management of PPH, then I'm sorry, you need to be questioned if you're a proper midwife. If you know you have, for, even for, you have even forgotten about the management of PPH, you can contact your other colleagues for proper management. But I'm happy that we are all here managing the PPH so that those who didn't come for lectures, you can teach them. Because there's a saying that he who teaches learns. The more you teach, the more you learn, the more you become more conversant with. So that is it. Adia. Any more questions? Adia. Also, yes, you, yeah. it, you can lower the bed towards the head side so that the head will be low to supply blood to the brain so that the patient will not run into shock. Okay. You say you can do what? You elevate you you the do... bed in such a way that the head, where the patient's head is, will be low, be low. so that there will be blood supply to the brain. Uh, no, so you raise the foot end of the bed. Yeah, I yes. think we said that. Good. Good. Uh -huh. Very good. Okay. Anybody? Any other form of management? Yeah. And please, after controlling the bleeding, because of the PPH, don't leave the patient at your facility there. Refer her to a higher facility where proper analysis can be done and management of the, the case can still be continued. Okay. Raja, please, can you minimize the screen for us? The, 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 I mean, you What did you say? I said, can you please minimize your screen for us? Uh, so I should minimize it. I should minimize my screen. Yeah, it's big. Yeah, so that we are writing some. Ah, yo. Ah, okay. Is it okay? Yes, Is it please. okay? Thank you, Asia. Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes. Yeah, please. With the, uh, yes, please. Like, go ahead. I'm listening to you. Asia, please. With the I like that going uh, to CPA when the client is bleeding. 
we hydrate. So when we hydrate and we want to take blood samples for uh, HD level, we will not get the accurate data because the, trans or the infusion will go into the discrete circulation. Hello. Hi, is that you? Yes. So please, I learned that during uh, PPH, when we are uh, hydrating the client, the infusion, it goes into systemic circulation. So when you take blood sample then for, hence, See, hence for, she will be the one just known. Hey, don't, don't bring your, don't bring your, your reality. Hmm. She is the one, she is the one who's going to, I have assigned her to you. I have assigned her to you, madam. So please, as I was saying, when you take sample, mm -hmm. because when you hydrate, the infusion, it goes into systemic circulation. So when you take sample for the HD level, you wouldn't get the accurate HD. So this, it was advised that we look at the various signs and symptoms when the client is still because and also the amount of estimated blood loss for us to use our discretion and uh, transfuse because if we depend on the hd you realize that the client has really bled but the hd will come and it will give you a high figure so if you are not careful you neglect it and you later you realize that you are losing your client so they advise uh, we mostly use our uh, signs and symptoms when it comes to the immediate stage of the management then later what we take the sample for the hd check but but later on it well, wouldn't it be the same load of uh, fluids that you have given to the patient won't it be the same yes I have, uh, because this is an immediate no, they were saying that uh, it was the we had a workshop and the head of the laboratory was teaching us that the immediately when we are hydrating because the fluid goes into the systemic circulation and the blood it will go into the bloodstream. So when they take the sample for the HD level, you realize that they will get a higher rate. Mm -hmm. so that will be there for immediately, but later when the client has. Uh, Passed out urine. When uh, the out a bit of urine, then we take the sample and we go, we'll get the accurate level. So we shouldn't depend on the lab, we shouldn't wait for the laboratory results to come before we go for the blood. We should also try and do our assessment with the conjunctiva and the amount of estimated blood loss for us to do the. You shouldn't always immediately rely on. Okay. Okay. So talking about not diluting the blood before you take sample for the HB. We are talking about the immediate case. Mm -hmm. I'm preventing it. That... So. Okay. I'm continuing. Yes. Yes. So you try to prevent it from occurring. And I think the other day we prevented the PPH from managing the first stage well, second stage, third stage well, and then the fourth stage management so that she doesn't end up into PPH I mean, secondary PPH. Okay. So that is it. Please, any questions so far? With regards to the management. But don't forget that patient may need blood transfusion. The hemoglobin is high. The subsequent ones that all the following day, we need to check again to ensure that the patient will not be discharged home with a low hemoglobin. It's very serious. Okay.
So far, so good. Please, any questions so far? Uh, hello. Okay. Um, so now let's move on. Do you have any question to ask? Yes, do you have yes. any question, Stephen? Stephen Combian. Stephen, um, do you have any question? Okay, ask, ask your question. That, that's a good thing that the management of uh, DPH uh, depends on the course, right? Because uh, there's always yes. a, some questions you set. What would the midwife do? Uh, uh, the, the first thing the midwife would do during PPH, then you bring maybe massage the uterus, call for help, do this. So in that sense, which one are you supposed to pick? <laughs> you are me. there. You are talking about the midwife, midwife alone in the delivery room. Uh, 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 and you want to manage PPH. At least as soon as... As soon as the baby comes out and patient side, that's why we are giving you the differences. And we are saying that about 90 to 95 or 98 percent, the bleeding is coming from the placenta side. So the first thing you do is to massage the uterus to contract. Thank you, that's the first thing that you have to do. Yeah. Unless you are convinced that the way the blood is coming like a in extreme form, it might be a trauma. In that case, if it is traumatic PP, maybe Victoria tear that is causing the PP. That's why we don't go and massage the uterus. Room. Look for uh, an artery forceps and then clamp the bleeding site because it is coming from a severe vessel. Okay, okay. thank you. I think I've answered your question. Yes, ma. Thank you. Yes, any more question, please? Yes, you're yeah, welcome. Any question before we move on to secondary PPH? Secondary PPH, yes. What are the causes? So please, let's move on to secondary postpartum hemorrhage. Secondary postpartum hemorrhage. Please, let's speed up so that I can set up from my drive to Kumasi. I have to come back to Kumasi because tomorrow I will go to work. So let's speed up. You mentioned people's name and they are running away. Eh? Fauzi Atanko. Fauzi Blood loss from the genital tract or carry more than 24 hours to face risk after delivery. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. After 24 hours, when the patient starts bleeding, it is coming as a result of. Uh, maybe secondary cause as secondary PPE. So what are the causes? What are the causes of secondary PPH? Yes. Retain product of yes. conception. Good. Retain product of conception. Thank you very much. Yes. Any other? Thank you very much. Yes. Your line is breaking. Infection. Infection like little cells. Infection like endometriosis. Metritis, rather. When there's endometriosis, you think it will cause secondary PP. Well, it may cause secondary PP. It may because as the local is coming, then the Endometrial tissue that is that has overtaken outside the endometrium, outside the uterus, and also start bleeding. It's possible causes secondary PP, but the major cause of secondary PP. Please come on, you know them. Mention them. But yes. Sergeant, okay. I just oh, have involution. Sub involution. There's something going on and pre preventing the uterus from contracting. Subvolution is there, but subvolution was certainly a symptom. 
One something. What? Same product of conception. Same product. No. That one has been just said. No. 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 This is a laceration, including episode. No. Mm -hmm. full bladder. Mm -hmm. A full bladder, yes. Full bladder can cause secondary PP. That's why when the women are going home, it is the duty of you, the midwife, to educate her to empty her bladder at frequent intervals. So a full bladder can cause secondary PP. Good. Any other place, I'm still waiting on you people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, causes of secondary PPH. Yes, I just have mucus fibers. Uh -huh, so... I just please you are muted. Thank you very much for reminding me. So the act, one major cause of secondary PPH is uh, how do you call it? When there's fibroid uterus, it can give rise to subevolution. Then we also have what we call annular detachment, the annular detachment of the service. Did I explain it to you? Hello? No, Hachi. Hello? Yeah. Ah, okay. Hello. When we say annular yeah. detachment of the service causing secondary PP, what happens is that those of you who delay, yeah. who, who contribute to the delay of uh, first stage of labor, prolong first stage of labor, especially getting to the later part of first stage of labor and prolong second stage of labor. They are the causes of the annular detachment and annular detachment of the service becoming a cause for secondary postpartum hemorrhage. What happens is that the anterior lip of the service, I think you all know anterior lip of the service, the anterior lip of the service becomes nipped it will be nipped, severely compressed by the symphysis pubis above and the fetal head below. Please, are we together? Are we together? Yes, sister. Yes, sister. Yes, yes sister. Yes, sister. Yes, sister. Hello. Yes, sister. Hi, hi, hi. 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 <laughs> You don't fall asleep, eh? We can. Okay, don't yes, feel yeah. Don't feel sleepy. I'll yes, please. I will finish in no time. Don't feel sleepy. So come yes, out of your bed. You. Those of you sitting on your beds or lying on your beds, you will still feel sleepy. So you come out. Get the information. When you finish, you can go and continue your sleep. What I'm saying is that annular detachment of the service is one of the causes, major causes of postpartum hemorrhage in post- uh, delivery or after delivery. And I said after delivery, no, in the course of managing the client during the first stage of labor, getting to the end of the first stage of labor, at the beginning of second stage of labor thereabouts. That is where if there's prolonged labor, then the anterior lip of the surface of the woman, it will be nipped, mm -hmm. a bit cafe. It will be nipped between the the fetal head and then the upper border of the synthesis pubis. 
So mm-hmm. it's like bone to bone. The bone and the soft tissue is lying in between. Mm-hmm. That's a perfect. So, so yes. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, so that's anterior lip of the service that is placed between the fetal head and the symphysis pubis. These two bones will be freaking will be nipping the anterior lip of the cervix together. So at the end of the day, blood from the main uterine section cannot get access to the anterior lip. And so that anterior lip of the cervix become necrosed. The tissue there will become necrosed, a bit pro. So once it becomes necrosed, well, in the process, the, uh, the experienced midwife will manage to slip it's okay. It's okay. I've placed it, so it's okay. Let's continue. So this anterior lip now, because there is lack of blood supply from the main uterus to that anterior lip of the cervix, it becomes rotten. And during the papyrium, it detaches. It separates from the, the cervix. And as soon as it gets separated, the patient will start bleeding heavily. And so when you bring her, I mean, they, they rush her to the hospital and it, she has delivered. You ask her, well, what now? Nah? Or they will tell you, well, Ben, now what you need? Or sometimes about two weeks, in it, or 10 days ago, or five days ago, it is still secondary postpartum hemorrhage. And she's bleeding. Then find out from the patient what happened. She will tell you, Madam, when I got up in the morning, I saw something like a rotten meat. Some of them will say, I saw something like a lip in my panties. And as soon as I saw it, then I started bleeding profusely. Straight away, I said, agree, midwife, you should diagnose that it is secondary PP due to detachment, due to annular detachment of the service. So that you don't wait, you're not going to cause any contraction to our by massaging in the uterus. Please. Either you send her to theater or in your delivery room and then you make suturing. You have to suture. Then the bleeding will stop. So that is the, uh, the cause of PPH due to annular detachment. The annular is spelled like A, A, A double, and annular. It is spelled like A double. Let me try to uh, spell it for you. Very good. Oh, thank you very much. You see, this is a typical annular detachment of the service. Look at how the service has been detached. Look at how it is detached. And so patient will start bleeding profusely. In that case, right here to theater, go and see the, where the, the detachment uh, took place. And then he said, and the bleeding was stop. Yeah. So I think you have all seen the annular. I, I the, the danger is that sometimes it affects the subsequent pregnancy and then the delivery. Yes, Anytime that she comes to deliver, because of the detachment, keep be quiet. Because of the detachment, the service fails to dilate. It can't stretch to dilate properly. So at a certain time, at a certain point in her dilatation, you see the patient may start having, may start bleeding. It's like the service wants to tear again. And so it can end up with intrapartum hemorrhage. Intrapartum hemorrhage. And that one will fall through that one. Uh, after your V, you don't waste time. Prepare the patient for 
theater and they go and remove the baby by CS. That is it. Any questions so far? Aja. Yes, madam. Please, you said after the yes, madam. You said after the service become necrosed due to lack of blood supply from the uterus, the anterior lip mm -hmm. will detach. Yes, it will detach. I said it. And that is what we call annular detachment of the service. Okay. I didn't get it. There wasn't blood supply, enough blood supply, enough blood supply to that part of the service. And that's why it has become necrosed. It has become rotten. It has lacked blood supply. And so it will amputate, it will come off. So, Aja, how and come only the anterior off, lip? How come only the anterior Please, how come the only the anterior lip is affected or becomes um, necrosed? Yeah, you, to not for the tados. Please, you can only verify from. You verify from those in the delivery room. Sometimes I'll run the service, it will go. Leaving that anterior lip. The reason is that patient has been pushing through incompletely dilated service in her previous pregnancies. Service is not fully dilated. That's why the multiparous woman. Be careful with them. She knows how to, they know how to support the perineum. So at seven, at eight cm cervical dilatation, she wants to push the baby out. By so doing, she has done that and the arterial lip, that part of the service, has never gone off completely. It has never dilated completely. She has been pushing through service that is incomplete dilated for four babies, sometimes five babies. But this time around, the baby was quite The baby was quite big. And so she couldn't push through. The midwife didn't allow her. It is, especially, it is common among those who have uh, who are used to home delivery. Home delivery, home delivery, one day, one day. This is how it will end. Please, do you understand? The one who has the question. Yes, please. Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. So that's it. Yeah. So that's it. So that is for the second day. Now, the management of the secondary PPH is that, depending on what is causing the secondary PPH, if it is a result of retained product, prepare to theater, prepare to return to theater, the evacuation of the uterus can be done and the bleeding will stop. If it is due to another detachment of the service, find your mini theater or the main theater, prepare her. Doctor will do suturing of the amputated limb of the service. They will suture it and the bleeding will stop. That is all about secondary PP. Then that's all right. Please look for me. Aja, please omit yourself. Thank you. So I'm saying that if it is due to secondary PPH, and it is as a result of retained product of conception, you try to massage the uterus to contract and retract, give any embolic drug, express the fundus, empty the uterus and the bladder of its contents, and then the wow. bleeding will stop. If it is as a result of a tear, you prepare to suture it, and the patient will, find, will be fine, and the bleeding will stop. If it's as a result of any other cause, you manage it as such. If it is a succession of childbirth to help educate the woman to practice family planning, don't just manage the PPH and leave the family planning aspect out. Else she comes back with the same PPH. 
in the next delivery, before the next delivery. She will come out with it and then it will affect the mother and uh, the baby as well because if your mother is sick and baby wants to breastfeed, what do you do? You can't do much. So we have to do what is good for mother and, and the baby. Okay. Any question? Ah, okay. So that ends. That ends the PPH. Any question? Let's see the complications of PPH, please. Dev, let's mention the complications. I want two people to mention the complications for me. Yes, and Syndrome. syndrome. Somebody says she has syndrome. What is Sian syndrome? Organ failure. Huh? Hello, Swanti. I'm saying that what will be the complications, the general complications of postpartum hemorrhage? And somebody said Shian syndrome. And I said, what is Shian syndrome? I'm asking the whole group. Please don't feel sleepy and answer the question so that we can close and then you go and do your other activities. I will also prepare and leave this Accra and go to Kumasi. Please. It's because of you people that I didn't try, because in the car, in the bus, I, I can't can get that. any better Thank network. Thank you. Please, is there a condition that okay? Condition where the mother flows to Latin. Due to breast milk. Uh huh. Okay. They, what actually they, happened? They, 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 okay. 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 What actually happens is that. When the patient bleeds after delivery, when the patient ends up with severe PPH, it affects the anterior pituitary gland also. And so in severe cases, because the anterior pituitary gland is also affected, it has also become necrosed. So all the activities of the pituitary gland is also halted. It is also stopped. You know, after delivery, the, the anterior pituitary gland will have to produce the estrogen and progesterone and other hormones that will help you to lactate well, that will help you to look so beautiful. But because this hormone is not there, because, gland, because this anterior pituitary gland is not there, its functions or activities is also stopped. And that will bring about the Sheehan syndrome, which is characterized by the woman looking like muscling. She, she, she looks so strong. And the picture like uh, 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 those women who, who start pulling records. You will be seen and see the woman like that. You will be sad to see the woman being so mock spleen. You will never be attractive to your husband. Mm -hmm. So we are saying that in that case, all the activities of the pituitary gland will be halted, where the woman can no longer lactate. The breast will begin to shrink. The vagina will atrophy. She wouldn't be able to menstruate. She is looking so masculine. The smoothness of the skin will no more be there. The estrogen phase of delivery will no more be there, all because she's having what we call Shihan syndrome. Ladies and gentlemen, I think I will end my uh, uh, topic here. I will, I will end here and then uh, uh, solicit for your questions or close for the day. Yes. Uh, 
and one no no. So that is what will happen to in that will happen in uh, Shehan syndrome. And in fact, she may not be able to menstruate when it reaches time for her to resume her normal menses. She wouldn't be able to do that, or because of Shehan syndrome. So if you're a midwife and a client complains to you, the people are woman, madam, madam, have delivered, but I can't lactate. I've been eating this, I've been eating that, all in an attempt to start lactating, but I'm not lactating. What do you do? I think we went through all this last week. What, what do you do? You, the first question that you ask is, madam, were you, uh, did you get PPH or did you bleed? plenty after delivery. If it, she has severe PP, she can tell you. Some of them can even go to the extent of explaining to you that she had a blood transfusion. All this you take note of and then explain to her that is the reason why. So she should continue taking in good diet. And if the baby is not having a breast milk at all, then they can start the non one or non two business which most of us don't like. Which most of us don't like that kind of uh, blood transfusion and other things. But you have to educate her to take it. And I think I mentioned uh, the intake of the purple peeled purple fruits and then ah, let yeah. the woman drink the water. It also helps with lactation. Yes, I've admitted myself. I haven't muted myself. No, no, no. People are living no, and they will no. get the questions from here. No, you are uh -huh. not. I wanted to okay. testify on your purple thing you put us. Uh, after, after uh, oh, the is the purple, the, the, the green purple? Like I'm saying that after the teachings, I uh -huh. went to wear command. And when I went, there was, there was this client that had uh -huh. uh, ruptured jaws and lost the baby. So the breasts were engorged. So I remember what you told oh. us, that if you let them mm -hmm. use a purple So I told mm -hmm. them to use the purple I wanted to see how to mm -hmm. it works. Mm -hmm. So truly, when I applied it, the next day when I came to work, I mm -hmm. asked her, let me look at the breast. The breast was truly down. I said, yes, mm -hmm. Adia, your medicine is good. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. I like that. When people put things into practice, it works better. It works, it works very well. It works very, very well. Thank you very much for that experiment. Thank you. On this note, if there's no question to ask, please shall we call it a day so that others can continue and can also prepare to set up my journey. Yes, I Thank do. Thank you, Adia. God bless you. Mm -hmm. Adia, thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank God bless you. Thank you, you Adia. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, Adia, madam. please, about the Shehan yes. syndrome. You're welcome. Thank you, my dear. Adia, please, about uh -huh. the Shehan syndrome. Yes. Who is that? Please, uh -huh. is it manageable? Can it be oh, resolved? Yes, it's manageable. Um, but time, it will take a longer period, but it will, it will be resolved. When you start taking in the vitamins, fruits and vegetables, you know, they help with healing. So it will help with the healing of the pituitary gland and other organs that were involved in that process. So it's a gradual process. It can be resolved based on the patient's intake. And then you have to look for uh, vitamin C also for her to enhance the healing process. When you do that, then you are ha having a headway. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. You're okay. Adia. 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 Yes, madam. Yes, yes. Yes, sister. Sister, please. I heard, the, I heard with PPH. When the woman is bleeding and then you've uh -huh. done everything and then the bleeding is not stopping, just like how you taught us with the uh -huh. breast and bone, you cut um, plantain, um, but mm. they have the first one, then the woman will sit on it. The bleeding will stop completely. Mm. Wow. Is that the plantain is the woman will do what? Mm. She will 
So pluck the leaf, like the first one, but they have the first big one, and then sit on it. The one in the um, middle. Yes. Magic. Have you tried it before? Before? Yes. My, I my think I also have experience with the same one. On my mother told me that was what she sits on, on it. Yes. And the PPH was she will just sit on the other side. I was talking about the one. Yes, it was on it. Not she won't do it on it. Can they bleed it? Please, for how long will she sit on the plantain leaf? Immediately, she said the people will stop. Forget her. Please, there is a big thing for small, small size will work. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Before you let test it on it. I no prayer. Okay, that's good. The are working, but that's good. But we don't have the any tool to that Yeah. Yes, Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Continue making you sad. If you have a private question to ask, I'm allow you. So. Okay, please try to revise whatever we have taught to you and prepare yourself for the one of the most reasons. Thank you very much for your attention. I wish you all the best. Thank you. How many? How many questions? M M C Q. You want to know the number of questions? How many do you want? Yes, sir. Hundred is okay. How many do you want? Hundred. Hundred is okay. Hundred. Hundred for two. Okay. 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 Yeah, we are supposed to be 800, but only 500, only 500, and I think allow uh, <laughs> okay. I attended the lectures. So, where are the remaining 300 and something? Where are the remaining ones? The remaining ones? No, I attend lectures. And the other people, after they write the queen, the mother, then they are on you. Stressing you, you are eating, they are waking, you are even sleeping, they are waking you up. Forgotten about the father because he didn't attend lectures, he can't write much. So, what about the other lectures? Hello, them, and then you have to advise yourself, advise your colleagues, advise your colleagues that they should inculcate the idea of attending lectures. Will come and we teach you. You will get something to write during the exam time. It's better not to attend lectures. If you decide not to attend, you are going to lose a lot of marks, which they don't know. So tell them to 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 ensure that they attend all the lectures from the lecturers. Aja, please. The quizzes we write. I can't, I can't accept my maths. Okay, when I get to Kumase, I will work on it. When I get okay. to Kumase, I will work on that one. Thank you very much for your attention. Please, I'm leaving the page. I'm leaving All the page. Right. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Bye bye.